Okay, uh, Crazy John Carrots here on OSH Radio. And I'm here today with, people know sometimes I have a hard time with names. So uh, the beautiful young woman with us is goes by K.O., but she can pronounce her name for us because I, I would kill it. My name is Karosha Ona Carol, and it is Russian, Polish, and the Ona is uh, Onastasia, and that is uh, Lithuanian. So I have a lot of that stuff over there. And I'm also Native American Abenaki from Newport, Vermont, plus a little French mixed in. Yay. <laughs> yeah, that's a, I'm, I am 100% European. I am quarter Spanish. And uh, it is interesting that I uh, had my genetics done and I'm 10% Italian. And my girlfriend says, how are you 10% Italian? And I said to her, well, when the Romans were in Spain, they didn't watch Netflix. So <laughs> I'm actually 10% Italian and 7% oh. Spanish by genetics. And it's kind of interesting how it works out. Now, my son, talking about native, is his mother was a New York Greek. And, and so he's got the native blood in him. Okay. He's only he's only 47 percent the same as me being 100 percent European. But, yeah, it's interesting how genetics affect you. And I think it does to some extent. But getting back to you, that is interesting about the mix. And uh, now you've done a lot of uh, you've done some TV shows. You worked on some movies. Yes. I know you've done some comic books. Uh, you do uh, psychic work, uh, ghost hunter work, all kinds of things. Maybe you can tell us how you got into doing all this and a little bit about your life and yourself. Well, you know what? First off, uh, we're in America and you can do and become anything you want. And I've always had that attitude, even as a very young girl. And I took that attitude along with over seven generations of uh, women on my um, on my grandmother, my babcha side of the family, the Polish side. And they were uh, dream interpreters. They were, um, you know, spirit communicators. And at a very young age, I showed um, an ability to be able to do that, carry on the family tradition, let's say. And I carried that um, to today even. And so I love that aspect of being able to help people uh, when they're trying to communicate with a relative or a pet that has passed away or have the ability to maybe see something or, and you know, the ability to see something in the future that they may want to stay away from. Um, so that's, uh, that's it on the paranormal side. And then I went into, you know, lectures on the paranormal and, you know, having my own um, New England cable show called CC the Huntress. Everyone called me CC. And then I, I wanted more growth and development. So I left ideal uh, event management. We were managed with the ghost hunters and everybody else on television. And I decided to trademark my um, queen of the paranormal and use my real name, Karosha Ona. It sounds like Transylvania. So I said, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody, I think they were um, confused. But, you know, when you tell them, hey, that that was just a character name I used for the name of the TV show. Well, then they were more accepting. And so I went forward doing that and I stopped doing uh, paranormal um, conventions because I felt my adage is that if you can only, you know, sing to the choir so long, you can't get out of the church. So I, I took a step out into the general public uh, to do very large comic cons. And I think that's where we met on the set of Toxic Tutu, but it was also a, a Comic Con. Uh, from what yeah, I it was a it was a smaller that. one. I've seen you at larger ones since, but yeah, it was some sort of little uh, Comic Con. Yeah. That they were shooting at, and that was the whole idea to work that into the right. into the thing, into the movie. Right. So I, you know, trademarked it and took a stage uh, into the general public. Started networking. Started doing things. But most of all, started to use the talents I had, not just paranormal, but um, let's say in, in public, uh, like in publicity. I've been a content provider and doing PR for people for about 20 years now. 
And I'm very delighted to say that I am an intricate part of Four Vision TV, which is uh, the creators are, get ready for this, it's Roy Foreman and his brother, the heavyweight, former heavyweight champion, George Foreman and the cast firm. And so I'm going to be doing the PR and strategizing and developing different plans and how to push forward. And um, and that's because I, I work hard, my, my work is good, I'm trustworthy, and uh, I'm easy to get along with. <laughs> so uh, they decided, oh, we'll, we'll go with her, we'll give her a shot. And so far it's been wonderful. Um, what a great group of people. And so that's what I do. I um, do content providing and PR, and I'm also the host of Hollywood Entertainment News, where we take a positive spin on celebrity news, uh, positive statements from celebrity we have up on the different uh, streaming networks and whatnot. So uh, I'm kind of multifaceted uh, when it comes to the different things I love to do. And and so people say, well, how can you combine everything? Well, hey, look at I think everything is paranormal. It's not normal. <laughs> at all in this world I mean, you take politics for instance you take television shows take your neighbor for instance I mean, it's all paranormal and so i figured i think this blends well with hollywood <laughs> so that's, what that's I a good point there's a lot of uh like on my when i used to host uh horror movies and also cartoons i used to say ghouls and boils and there's a lot of ghouls and boils out there you know oh there sure are and when i started with the um the big comic cons i went to one called O comic con with my friend mike halleck he was mantar for the wwf god rest his soul he passed away last year love him dearly and miss him terribly we were in um nebraska omaha nebraska and the comic con was held in oaks bluff uh right in iowa and so um we did this comic con and this guy came up to me and wanted to know if i want to be in a comic book and i'm thinking well who the heck doesn't want to be in a comic book right i'm at a comic con and i said yes just one thing needs to be followed i need to do what i do in real life between the pages of the comic book. I don't want to deviate. I don't want to become a fake character. I have to be what I personally do. He agreed. And that was it. Next thing I know, a comic historian for about 50 years wrote to me and told me I was the first person in comic book history to be a superhero doing what I do in real life between the pages of a comic book. And I'm thinking, oh, that's fabulous. How, how could that possibly be, you know? I'm sorry, let me shut this off. That's fine. Inevitably, somebody always calls me. <laughs> Mostly my daughter. <laughs> my daughter calls me a lot, too, a lot more than yeah. my son. Uh, I, the, the, the WWF thing is an interesting tie-in. This weekend, I covered a local wrestling, which is CCW. And... Uh, some of them, some of the people wrestling there were from the WWE. I know, I, I remember the day when it was a WWF. And uh, my dad actually, WWF used to do a lot of filming in Allentown, where, where I'm from. And my dad actually designed the building that they used to film in. So wow. it's interesting how things are intertwined like that. Yeah. And, it, you know, you said really about, hmm, I'm sorry. I said it really is. Go ahead. Uh. Yeah, and the fact that you're saying about doing things, I think what people miss a lot, and I'll say this a lot about people, is people that are creative are creative. It doesn't really just go one direction. Like, they think because you're a musician, you can't necessarily be an actor. Or because you're this, you can't be that. Or you can't paint. But what I find is a lot of people that are creatives are creative. It's not really restricted. Right. And... And that's how, how you are, and you're a strong woman, and that is great. You find a lot of people that are creative that go into a lot of different directions. Like even Keanu Reeves, he does movies. He does designs motorcycles. I've mm -hmm. gone to see him in Dog Star play bass. Uh -huh. And if you're creative, you're creative, and it comes out, and that that is you. Right. And I, you know, I think it's wonderful, but, you know, getting back to the comic book where the historian wrote me, I'm thinking that can't be true, but he said the first people to do 
what they did in real life was uh, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans, I think in 1934, but they were doing their TV shows. They weren't a superhero doing things that, you, you know, like uh, diving into a river and saving a dog or this, uh, getting a dog out of a burning building, which I did. This all documented. And so uh, I got that. But as a woman and being alive, it's very hard to get that message out. But we've broken the glass ceiling where, you know, I'm in Italy and magazines in Italy, Spain, Chile, and the UK now just going across the, um, the not just the United States, but going across the world with that message. I, and eventually it'll it'll kick in and, and that'll be great for a legacy for my, uh, to pass along to my grandson and, um, and his family as time goes on. Uh, so I love the comic aspect and being all part of that. I like being in the movies and doing the acting part. And I I filmed a, a piece in a movie called, um, well, I'm not going to say because it's not out. <laughs> I'm just going to not say a lot about that. But anyways, I was, I was licking a knife and the blood and stuff like that. And one part I was actually outside, we were filming on this old porch. So there was a lot of, I had to do a lot of yelling. And, ah. Next thing we know, the police showed up because a woman across the street called the police, thought something was happening. And so the police um, you know, call, ended up calling the producer, the directors there, they're looking at the script. And it was fun because they decided to watch the whole thing. And one of the cops said to me, he said, I got goosebumps when you got done. You scared the hell out of me. And that's just a movie. And my daughter got so scared, she hid the knife I had. And uh, I did get it back last month, though. So, <laughs> so, so you have to be versatile. You know, I do the um, the publicity for the uh, for a lot of people, a lot of Comic Con uh, celebrities, a lot of celebrities in general, businesses, authors, movie producers. Also for the Four Vision TV, like we talked about the formats, and with them, this is an actual television station they're putting together for boxing, wrestling, for the martial arts. There's a whole combination of things that they're pushing forward when it comes to extreme sports and, and whatnot. So it's uh, wonderful to be able to be on board and be versatile like that between screaming and licking a knife in a movie <laughs> to being the professional on a television, you know, te television station. <laughs> well, see, it's all part of the creative. And, you know, yeah. I've I always laugh too. I, I had a, I was in a band and we had a record deal and people follow you and they tell you, oh, it's a wild lifestyle. And I remember saying to the one singer, I said, what wild lifestyle? Of and he made a point though. The people that follow you are busy following you and partying. Yes. You're busy worrying about all the business end and everything. Because mm -hmm. we were never big enough to pay people to worry about that for it. We had to worry about it. Right. And there's a lot of stuff to do. But yet I've always liked doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. There is enjoyment that comes. And you talked about movies, you know, you go to my IMDb page. I've done all kinds of silly. I call them silly movies. But to tell you the truth, I've enjoyed a lot of them. And I've done stupid little things in them and stuff. And I don't know if I'd really want to do a big. I've been on the sets of big movies and I don't know if I really like that. I like the intricate things you do this you do that you run over here you yes. do that you do that and at the end of the day you actually have a lot of satisfaction that you helped with a lot of things right i i like to call myself a glorified extra and a lot of my <laughs> yeah a lot of my extra work comes from this little office studio i've got a green screen i've got a wonderful camera set up i've got lights and um i do quite a bit of work and um, so you make a little bit here, a little bit there. It all sounds wonderful. And then you get the credit whether they used your footage or not. That's the agreement that I make. And I also have a, an agent that does the same thing that, you know, sure, she should be an extra, whatever. She's getting the credit. And that's that. And so whether they film that part of being an extra or something else, you still get your credit. And um, but a lot of uh, people that are extras and different things. They go through like this like agency, you pay like $39, $49 a month. They get you there, but they 
don't include you on any of the credits. And I think that's pretty bad, you know. Now, I have seen that you've got, you, you were talking about being in different magazines, and I have seen that you've been getting covered a lot, which is great. And I do think the nice thing is that people in this country don't realize is that a lot of other countries like our stuff. And I think even appreciate it more that our own people here in America appreciate. And uh, they have a lot more appreciation, I think. I think so. You know, I know what the, um, there was a, the magazine in Spain wanted me to write a, a personal perspective on the challenges that women have in the United States has nothing to do with Hollywood had nothing to do with anything except for that perspective and so and it had to be 130 words and I'm like oh god I could write a book on challenges women have. Yeah, 130 isn't too much really yes. no it isn't so you had to really just hard hit you know some specific elements and I did, and I got it, and they loved it. So that's going to be going in. And I also did a piece for an Italian magazine just based on uh, Hollywood stars going to the Cannes Film Festival. And, uh, you know, sent the pictures and this and that. So it's not just, oh, it all has to be on KO in the magazine. I like to be creative in other aspects when it comes to actually writing and being a journalist and stuff like that. Now, you talked about a movie coming up that you didn't want to mention. Now, people are listening to this today and stuff. What movies that might be out there could you send them to watch? What might they be able to get like on Amazon or so or, or well, that they I, could see you in? I'm in a movie and you can get it on Amazon. We've got, was it the Toxic Tutu that you and I are Toxic Tutu, yep. Yeah. We also have uh, Attack of the Killer Chickens. <laughs> mm. <laughs> See, that's what I said. It's, it's yeah, sometimes it's they're all in that. So it's like, it was okay. Um, I was dressed okay because I was at Chiller Theater, the Comic Con. And so uh, my girlfriend, uh, Genevieve Rossi, she was, you know, producing this thing. She said, Come on out. I got this role for you. And so I'm a quick study. They just gave me the lines and I did it. And, <laughs> Um, so that that was really cool. Also, I, I'm on um, Family Two More Blood, which is one we filmed with Toxic Tutu. It's finally made. It's finally being released at the Hollywood Theater. And I believe it's ha Hackertstown, Maryland. And that's going to be in May. And I hope to journey down there. Um, I truly want to because that was a, a scene that I did with Mike Hallack. It was a rape scene. And people like when I have the clip of that scene up on IMDb and I when I did put it up on Facebook, it was highly emotional and people really thought this was happening. And I'm thinking, damn, I need an Academy Award. Yeah. You know, that's a good one. Then I did a movie, um, it's called Scary Paranormal Movie. And it's all about all the cheesy paranormal events I've done or attended. <laughs> I pulled them all together. It's a comedy and it's a good one. And um, the rest of the work, I mean, I've been in Supernatural uh, just as an extra in the background and um, a lot of other, other things like that. Uh, I do makeup on set sometimes. And, you know, my passion right now is to really push um, Oh, and I also have a paranormal show coming up that uh, we we were signed. Can't really talk about that. But what I can say is we're in production right now and we're filming that next week. We're doing our first show next week. So that's going to be an amazing thing. And that's slated for Hulu. So that will be fantastic. Well, that's going to be good. Yeah. See, I did. I did want to make sure you mentioned that today because I knew that was coming up. Yes. But and the Hackerstown thing, I want you to keep me in the loop on because I'm not far from there. All right. I can send you the information about that. Like where, you know, um, the date and the times. I guess they're going to show. I think there are four movies involved. Uh, I believe two that I'm in, but I'll have to check. One is the family, uh, two more prop, family blood, two more properties. So uh, that one was a good one. And um, and again, that that rape scene was something that I didn't expect. Um, I I showed up, and the girl that was going to do it backed out, 
and they looked at me, they, hey, you know, production costs money. And they're like, can you handle this? I said, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> they, I said, it? Are there any like words to learn? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, I, find, I find that for two reasons i did a movie one time where there's a rape scene and we purposely made it a husband wife yeah that in real life there were husband wife so that people weren't worried about it yeah. and uh so that 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 worked out good that way and it's funny because you know mike being the wrestler from the wwf every single he was supposed to hit me so every time he hit me or pretended he hit me, he'd bang his chest and go boom, like you would in the wrestling ring. Right, right. We'd all crack up laughing, going, no, no, no. You, you you pretend you hit her, but you don't hit yourself. Okay, camera's rolling, boom, <laughs> all over again. We we're laughing so hard. But there was one part where he actually caught me in the ear and it turned it wicked purple mm. and i think the i used to be a cop and the cop in me turned around and bang i popped him so hard he went flying off the bed i think they have it on film <laughs> and uh so he's going what happened and i showed him my ear and it was it was getting bad and uh well we finished the scene off uh, but um those are the things behind the scene. And I wish, you know, they say, I, I truly hope he saved that footage because that's priceless. That's just priceless. I always joke that that's the stuff that'll come out after you pass away that someone will yeah. put together, you know, and you'll be like, oh. Yeah, but, I'm going uh, to try to make it down there. We'll see how that goes with my schedule I, in the filming of the Paranormal Show. I don't know. But I really would like to go. In the meantime, as a content provider, I'm going to be doing the publicity. So I'm starting that this week. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves because then people get sick of reading it. So you have to kind of time it just right to so people can see it, they can follow up on it. And then it's a news break uh, because I have a content provider there. And then your event is up and uh, people will be able to go to it. Now, I know I told you I wouldn't keep you too long because I know you have things to do. What kind of links would you like me to put, like they say, down below for people to find you? What are your uh, some of the best places to find out about you? They can go to HollywoodEntertainmentNews.com or QueenOfTheParanormal.com. Either one has all of the... Um, like uh, social media sites that you can go to from there. You can read all the press articles. You can learn a little bit more about me there and the different things that I have done. And um, I'm also a chaplain and I uh, work a lot with young veterans. That's uh, my main goal, but I do work with the homeless and, you know, collect money for pets uh, and God, just go to the website and read it. <laughs> <laughs> you are furry friends. I got, I got mine and I got my daughter's newest one here with me babysitting yeah. them. And I tell you there, sometimes I hate to say it, but they're sometimes the best part of the family. Uh, they love you unconditionally. Well, that's the thing. Mine sleep with me. I have a cat. She's 20 years old and she sleeps right here all night. And she licks me, licks me. <laughs> and I just let her, you know, and I'll carry her out for breakfast, but she's pretty spry. She jumps on the bed, but I do spoil her a lot. You know, for her. That's all right. They're your fur babies. Yes, absolutely, John. Yeah. So now, uh, I guess in, in ending, uh, you being a strong woman and having done a lot, maybe there's something you'd like to say for uh, up and coming women that uh, want to get involved in things and something you could say that would be motivational for them. Well, um, let me think. I would have to say never tell Never let anyone tell you that you cannot do because you can do. Dreams do come true. Your happiness does not hinge on someone else's happiness. I know people who have left the entertainment industry because their husband didn't like it. And, and now they're like putting up pictures of old things they used to do. It, it, it's like, I'm sure they regret it. And you have to live for yourself and make yourself happy and prosperous because if you're not that way. How are you going to be able to help other people? 
My big thing is I mentor people. I'm dedicated in helping others achieve their goals, mainly women, but I do help men as well, whether it's PR, this or that. I want to see people succeed. And I am a firm believer that, you know, the good you put out will come back tenfold. The karma. Yes, I agree. And like you said, it's, it's uh, true for everything. I always say my, my saying is I love the win-win, but I always say dream it, do it. If you dream it, yeah. try and do it. You can. So. Yeah. And, and, well, and, never, and never pick up on anybody. It, it, it gets you. Yeah, it just looks stupid. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> but Thank you for being with us today, and hopefully you, we will Tom. talk again in the future, and uh, it's been a great time, and I, I love to follow your stuff, and hopefully we can do more things in the future again. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Okay, bye.